give birth to God's desire. Tell your neighbor, I didn't say yours. Say, I said his. It's a big difference between his and yours. The Bible says that God would give you what? He would give you the desires of what? Watch that. That doesn't mean he's going to give you your desires. It means he gives you the desires. That means he puts in you the desire that you're supposed to have so that you move in the right direction. Sometimes the reason that we're not able to accomplish what God wants us to accomplish is because we're chasing our own desire. And guess what? God's not obligated to follow your desire. God's not obligated to follow your plan. Some people go, I got my plan and it don't work. That's great. But God's not obligated to follow your plan. He's got his own for your life. And you waste a whole lot of time in the wilderness until you get to understand that he is God. I remember I, I was pastor a couple years ago. I was going through some things and I'm praying, oh God, I need you to change this. And God, I need you to do this. And God, I need it tonight. You ever, ever prayed that way? Anybody ever needed a right now miracle? And, you, and the Lord kind of tapped me on the shoulder and said, son, sit down and be quiet. He said, I'm God. I've been God for a long time and I'm good at it. You stop trying to micromanage the Holy Ghost and he'll do something in your life. And we have, we have this, you know, this, this perception that if God don't do it when we want him to do it and how we want him to do it, he ain't moving. But God don't need your permission to move. Some of you, God actually said that some of you right now think the enemy's got the upper hand, but you don't even see God moving behind the scenes. That's why the Bible says when you come in the church, give him a sacrifice of praise because you don't know what he's doing. And you don't got to feel it for him to do it. And tell your neighbor, saying what you don't understand is your shout just pushes God on to do it faster. So if you're sitting there thinking that you're going to cry and be quiet and get your miracle, <laughs> you're going to be waiting a long time. Tell your neighbor, unfortunately, Pentecost is for the people that make noise. And people that don't make noise, guess what? They don't get no attention. <laughs> just telling you. Now look. I'm a daddy. I got three boys. Now, I'm going to be honest with y'all. I know this ain't right, but my three-year-old is the loudest. You, yeah, you know him, don't you? He is loud, and guess what? He take his brother's toys, and he'll hit him over the head with it in a minute. My three-year-old son makes so much noise that when we come in the room, we're not concerned about justice. We just want quiet. Give that boy what he wants. And my other sons would go, but daddy, it's mine. I don't care. I'll buy you another one. Give it to him. Want to know why? He's making the most noise. Tell your neighbor, I just might get your miracle tonight. Why are you sitting there being quiet? Say, I'm going to make so much noise. I'm not only going to get what God has for me. I'm going to take what God has for you.